I'd like to call the City of Menasha Common Council meeting to order. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have roll call, please. Alderman Crow Kramer? Here. Alderman Langdon? Here. Alderman Kean? Here. Alderman Zielinski? Here. Alderman Spencer? Here. Alderman Taylor? Alderman Benner has been excused. The first item on the agenda this evening is a public hearing. It's on the proposed amendments to Title 13 of the Menasha Code of Ordinances pertaining to existing mini warehouse facilities in the C1 General Commercial District and the C4 Business Park District. Director Kyle, did you want to give us some background on this? Yes, well, the ordinance, or what you had just mentioned, kind of is it in a nutshell. Uh, what the ordinance amendment would do would be to allow the expansion of existing uh, mini storage facilities in the C1 and C4 districts subject to a special use permit. Thank you. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak on that topic this evening? Seeing no one, we'll call the public hearing to a close and we'll open it up to public comments on any matter of concern to the city. If anyone is here that would like to speak this evening. Good evening. Tom Kanetsky, 858 Emily Street in Menasha. Uh, as you probably know, I'm currently, first of all, I'm currently the vice president and general manager of the Menasha Athletic Association, better known as the Menasha Max. Uh, we've been working on Cosmo Park renovation now for, well, we talked about it about two years now. And uh, we made quite a bit of progress. We're not done yet. Wait a while for it. No, no, it's going to be pretty nice. Uh, we have more money. It'd be nicer than, a, than what we want, what we, what we're, we're getting there, okay? Uh, and we've been working with the uh, park department, Mr. Tungy and Mr. Maz. Uh, they asked some of our input. We gave it some time, dollar amount, putting the kibosh on that. But lately now, about two months ago, Brian called me and said, hey, Tommy, we like to get that <clears throat> uh, new field turf in there. Uh, oh, I said, great. Well, we like to ask the... Uh, a thousand dollars a piece for the uh, donors out there. What can you think you do? I said, well, we'll give it a shot. Put us down, I said, we'll get it done. So I'm happy to say uh, that I don't know how the other entities, the Foxes and the Browers and the high school, the twins came out, but I'm happy to put out, uh, present to Mr. Tungy in here a check for $1,200. And we're not done yet. We're not done yet. We're not. We didn't give up. The main thing complains the bleachers, and we get sponsored with the bleachers. That'll really add to the ballpark. We like to make that ballpark be a destination for people that want to come just to see the park. And thank you for the time. And by the way, the Menasha Max just competed a three-peat in the league. If you don't know who's in there, Appleton, Shaboy, and Ahiash, three powerhouses. Three years in a row, we took first place, and we think we are real ambassadors also for the city of Menasha on and off the field. Thank you. Hey, Tom, would you like to talk about the MAC award that was just recently announced as well? I don't know if you... Okay, yes. For the first time in our history, uh, our MAC award, and we give every year, and normally it goes to an individual uh, person, this year we broke away from that and it went over real well. We gave it, we gave it to the uh, veterans of foreign wars and they were so happy and so deserving and uh, we couldn't be more proud of giving them the award. I, I thank you for reminding me of that. <laughs> thank you for doing that, Tom, and thanks for coming up tonight. Okay. Is there anyone else who wishes to comment this evening? 
Seeing no one else, we'll move on to the report of department head, staff, and consultants. The first item is the minutes and communications to receive. Do we have a motion? Alderman Taylor. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to, to receive minutes E through I and communications G through N. Second. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Item G is the consent agenda. There are six items this evening. The minutes to approve from the Common Council meeting of September 8th. The Board of Public Works recommendations from September 8th, including the street use application for the Menasha High Homecoming Parade on Friday, October 2nd. The payment to Northeast Asphalt for the new street construction and reconstruction of in the amount of $295,720.35. The recommendation to authorize, authorize to execute an intergovernmental agreement to satisfy eligibility for recycling consolidation grant for cal calendar year 2016. The plan commission recommendations from September 15th to recommend the ordinance relating to the existing mini warehouse storage facilities in the C1 and C4 zoning districts with the following change, replace constructed with in existence. And the plan commission recommendation for the proposed certified survey map for 320 Shoot Street. Are there any items anyone would like separated this evening? Alderman Taylor? Uh, five and six. Any other items? Do we have a motion for items one, two, three, and four? Alderman Taylor. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion uh, that we approve uh, items one, two, three, and four. Second. There's a motion, a second. Could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion carried on roll call seven, zero. Item five doesn't really need any action. It would be kind of taken up in the ordinance under ordinances and resolutions. So if there is no objection, we'll just leave that one on the table as is. Item six is the proposed certified survey map for 320 Shoot Street. Do we have a motion? Alderman Taylor. Mr. Mayor, I'd like some discussion on this because uh, the council did ask for some assistance uh, to the developers of the uh, uh, downtown office building project with uh, uh, purchase of uh, this parking lot and I understand director Kyle said there is a, a letter that we received here and uh, certainly would like to read over that first before we take any action on this and also uh, we have quite a few different documents here maybe director Kyle can uh, tell us where we're at with the, the latest price and uh, uh, little explanation with uh, how many stalls and uh, also are we going to meet the city's current uh, uh, landscaping uh, needs as as uh, our ordinance um, <clears throat> well the CSM is necessary in order to effectuate the uh, purchase agreement for the portion of the Germania Hall lot um, that we're uh, pursuing in order to meet our uh, obligations for parking to uh, McClellan Downtown Development. Um, so I, I guess I can kind of uh, address this matter now in detail or later. Um, and I, I suppose we could start here and, and then uh, take up the matter uh, later as part of the purchase agreement. Um, as <clears throat> at the last meeting, I was directed to um, make inquiry with the developer concerning a contribution to the city's costs for acquiring a portion of the Germania Hall lot. Um, the mayor and I met with the developer's representative, John Hogarty, last Tuesday. Um, we had received some email correspondence from them uh, indicating that they were, were respectfully declining to contribute uh, to the replacement parking for the McClone obligation. Uh, 
And uh, he just dropped off uh, late this afternoon a letter to that effect indicating that uh, neither the developer or one of its uh, members, John Bergstrom, were willing to uh, contribute funds for the purpose of providing that alternate parking. Uh, with respect to the purchase agreement, uh, we went back and forth. There were uh, a number of offers and counter offers. We ended up with an accepted offer at $290,000. Um, with respect to the parking lot changes, um, this is a continuation of an existing parking use. There would not be an obligation to bring that parking lot to any different standard for landscaping or lighting uh, until such time as the parking lot is repaved. Uh, that would then engage all of our requirements for uh, uh, the landscaping stormwater management and lighting. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. Alderman Solinsky. Thank you. What discussion was there on the Planning Commission? I'm sure there was more than what was in the minutes about splitting these property, this property. Um, there really wasn't uh, a whole lot of discussion. I mean, there, uh, CSM had been prepared previously. Um, that included a portion of the property that was part of the pillars, but that CSM was never recorded. And so this CSM kind of took that as the base and then uh, delineated the territory that would be occupied by the city's, uh, the city's proposed acquisition for parking. Well, I asked this question at the last council meeting. If this was anybody else asking for this proposal other than the city, what would the planning Commission stance be on this, splitting a property and possibly blighting that property because there wouldn't be any parking for it? Well, it's not blighted any more than um, the Lake House Supper Club is blighted. They are in the same C2 zoning district. They have none of their own parking. There remains, I think, 30-some stalls uh, above and beyond what the uh, city is acquiring on the Germania lot. So there would be parking provided there for that business and then this parking lot would be operated as a city lot wherein that parking would be available for public use other than you know that normal business hours so on weekends and evenings the public would have access to that parking okay and then with every other purchase in the city there's always appraisals done was there an appraisal done on this property well, that statement that you just made is not correct. We have purchased property and, on many locations without appraisals. Where the appraisals are required is when we, um, when we acquire property for like the stewardship program, uh, state funded things, wherein there is a requirement for the uh, appraisal to be made. Well, we had we just purchased a parking lot two three years ago. There were appraisals done on that. Which, which parking lot? One behind the bank over here. There was no appraisal done on that. We just come, bought it. We just bought it. Mm -hmm. And how much per square foot did we purchase that for? I don't know, but it was substantially more or less than this one. I would say it's less. Mm -hmm. What makes this one so valuable, other than we need it? Well. As I mentioned, where we started on this negotiation was a figure that I had uh, proposed which related to what we had the, assess the land valued at plus a, an uptick for what would it cost to pave it. And that was, uh, I don't know, 192000 And then it was negotiated from there they were at 306000 or 360000 rather. And we're, we got to where we're at. We had, um, I think, three offers and counter offers. Anyway, it went back and forth quite a few times. Yeah. And this is where we're at. And quite honestly, what are our other options at this point? Our other options are to look elsewhere and spend more money. So I, I'm, 
I, I, if you don't like what we're having to pay, that's well, fine, but we also have an obligation that we have to meet to the developer, and we don't have good options elsewhere to do that. Well, now in hindsight, Alderman Taylor came up with a good alternative of purchasing parking lot on Broad Street, pur pur purchasing some houses that are possibly blighted, and some of them actually look like they're blighted, on Broad Street, and creating some parking area there for this temporary use. But we've, we've looked at that option, and that option is not less expensive. And if you also think about how much time would be required to acquire all of those properties, relocate persons, relocate Randall's Auto House. Um, Randall's Auto House was not even on the table. At one time it was. No, it was never brought up there. But I then think. there's that much territory less to be used for parking as well if you peel that piece out of it. It's, I, I don't believe it's feasible and we have an obligation and we've signed that amendment to the agreement with McClone. They're parking, they're parking the Germania lot full right now and it's only by the graces of the people that own it that they're being allowed to park there. Faith has brought in 60-some uh, employees. They're now parking in the Chute Street lot. So this parking demand is not something that we can put off. It's a need that's here today, and this matter needs to be addressed today. I don't know. I can't. I don't have a crystal ball, but is this just a temporary need until, I don't know if McClellan Building is leased in the future, or if this is just a temporary need until the parking ramp is done? Well, the... the it's not a temporary need because there's 50,000 square feet of office space in that building, which we committed to provide a good portion of that, and the balance of it is over here. Yes, I agree, but we gave that parking lot away, and now we're, now Again, we're paying the piper here. We did it through a development agreement, which you all agreed to, so we got uh -huh. here by going through a process, and I think we have some obligations that have to be met. I really wonder if we all agreed. <laughs> well, it was approved. Yeah, it was approved. That, I, was, I can still remember that this is not a need that was gonna come really quick, and now all of a sudden the ink's not even dry and it's on our table. I'm sure well, I don't think anybody gave a timetable for when this parking need was going to express itself. McClone had yes. an empty floor and a part of another empty floor, and now that's full. So I'm, I'm and tickled pink that that's there, but part of that parking lot that's used for the other businesses was designated for McClone, correct? Over here? Yes. Broad Street? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they had 120 stalls that were designated for them. And they're still there, aren't they? Some of them? Um, they're not using, to my knowledge, any parking over there. Their parking is being met by their lot, Germania for the moment, and Chute Street. What area was designated for them in, on the Broad Street parking lot? There wasn't, a, to my recollection, a specific area designated. They. The, the sort of understanding was they would not park in that first tier along the back of the businesses, but other than that, they could park pretty much anywhere in the lot. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Taylor. Director Kyle, uh, right now we're going to use 75 stalls in the Germania Hall parking lot. There is, well, I, there is actually uh, 71 stalls there. There's. Uh, Rows and then one of the stalls is sort of split diagonally in order to allow circulation by the, uh, uh, the rear entryway. Okay, and we need all 71 stalls. Okay, and then uh, where are we picking up the other stalls for McClone then in the Shoot Street parking lot? The remain would be in the shoots, the remaining 39. And then how many stalls do we have to provide? 39. And then, uh, I wish I would have seen a, a landscaping uh, design for future, and uh, do we have to put a retention pond in? Uh, well, I believe when the when the paving is removed, then we would have to look at stormwater management, just as we are going to need to for the Shoot Street lot. Okay, and then. Uh, 
are we going to be out looking for more stall? How many stalls is that going to take up? Uh, yeah, and, until until we get further along in the engineering, um, that I, I don't know. And there are ways to deal with it um, through uh, in-ground systems and so forth. It's ex expensive, but there are ways to deal with it. And likewise, in Shoot Street, we will be looking at meeting our landscaping requirements when that's redone. So it's uh, quite possible that we're going to be shrinking the number of stalls in there fairly significantly. So this is, we're kind of looking at a short-term fix, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to be probably looking for some more, yeah. and some, as some more parking stalls. Director Radke indicated that the stormwater function can be integrate, integrated with uh, landscaping on site. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then how many stalls does this leave the Germania Hall with its building? Um, is it 38, Gary? Yes. How many? 38. 38. As I said earlier, uh, I would have probably been more interested in purchasing the whole property um, for the needs of the city. And I'm sure when we chew up the <coughs> chew up these 71 stalls, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> We chew up these 71 stalls, uh, we're going to need uh, more stalls instead of looking at it as a, um, a comprehensive picture for the community. I think we're chopping it up here. Uh, I was told this weekend that uh, Germania had uh, their leases going to expire with the current uh, renter at this point. Or leasey at this point in November. And do you know what the plans are for that at that point? I don't. The owners are here. If okay. Uh, I I would ask for unanimous consent to hear uh, from the developers what uh, what they're looking at for the future here uh, with this property. Do we have any objections? Seeing no objections. I don't know if anyone has any plans or any plans they'd like to share with us well, they're all looking at each other <laughs> uh, my name is Gary Landecker I'm the real estate broker that is uh, trying to sell this parcel at this time uh, the tenant that is in there is leaving in November and uh, we have a couple of interested parties with respect to opening a another restaurant type facility in there and you simply can't do it with the tenant that's in there we had hoped originally that they could just use their back portion of the building as a uh, auction center but it's they have way too much in there and I, it's very difficult to show the property and to sell it that way we are comfortable with the um, the parking situation based on the sale of the 72 lots because those type of restaurants are normally busy in the evening hours and on weekends, not necessarily during the daytime hours. <coughs> Excuse me. And with the remaining 38 stalls that are there during the day, if they are open for noon type business and that type of thing, that is ample along with the street parking at this particular point to make it a, uh, again, successful operation. So that's basically the plan that we're at at this point. Thanks. Do you have a signed contract with the restaurant? Do you have a lease no, or a contract no, with the no. restaurant? We have two or three people looking at it at this particular point, but I have no leases. Thank you. Craig, if the building is sold, is there any upgrading that has to be done to the your parking lot at that time? No. Again, you know, in the C2 district, we don't require parking to be provided along with the development as we do in most of our other commercial districts. So they would be okay to uh, operate, uh, you know, in with the parking that's there. Okay. And if the parking lot is upgraded at some point, how many stalls would you estimate that we would lose out of the 71 stalls? 
Um, well, we would lose stalls um, along the western perimeter because that's residential property there and there would have to be a landscape transitional area, not less than 10 feet. Um, and then likewise along uh, Chute Street, we would have a landscape buffer there that could be no less than eight feet. So we'd probably lose I'd say 20 to 25 stalls plus interior parking. So yeah, I mean, it would be substantial. And timetable on that, you think, that, where that might happen? Um, I'm trying, that lot was repaid, what, five years ago? 2009. So um, usually that's 15, 20 years. I'd just like to also say uh, Germania Hall has been, uh, with these developers, have been a good neighbor for the, the neighborhood down here. And uh, they've run a great business, put a lot of money into that building, and uh, um, we, we certainly appreciate it in, in the neighborhood in this district. Thank you. Alderman Langdon. Thank you, Mayor. Great. Okay, I'm going to... I'm going to admit I don't know how to read all this stuff. Like you say, when you buy a house, you got a million papers to initial. So if you could just run me through this. Um, I know there, the, the, the purchase price start at 300000 The original, um, the original uh, response that I got to my offer for a hundred and ninety two thousand six hundred was uh three hundred and sixty thousand plus they were ax asking for some other things regarding the maintenance of the uh, rod and so forth and uh so uh after that i made a counter offer at uh two hundred and forty thousand which was rejected and the developer came back at 306,000. Um, I rejected that and made a counter offer of 276,000, which was rejected. Um, and the, the, they came back with a purchase price of 300, which was rejected. I came back at 282,000, which was rejected. They came back with 300,000. I came back with 290,000, uh, which uh, was accepted. Okay. And I'll also indicate that in our discussions, we had asked for, and they did agree to granting the city a right of first refusal for the purchase of the remainder of the property. So that, you know, up until such time that uh, they have another offer pending, um, we, you know, we have at least the ability to buy that if some eventuality would happen in the near term future where additional parking is needed and that site would sort of fit the bill for that parking. Okay, thank you. Um, how did the developers come up with 300000 if we don't know what it's appraised at, well, how did they come up with that with that number? The the number that or they, not the owner, I should say. Sorry. Yeah, the number that they started with was uh, based on five thousand dollars a stall, which was information that they had garnered from uh, some property transactions in the city of Nina, where uh, property was acquired for the purpose of parking. Okay. Um, so we are going to buy the stalls on lot A, parcel A, correct? Yep. All right. And we will be maintaining that and snow plowing that in the winter. Who will be snow plowing parcel B? Who will be maintaining that parcel? Um, the owners. 
Okay, so when we get up to that line, the, the, the plowers are going to stop right before the building and then and stop. Yeah, I don't know how they're going to plow it, but that's... Oh, that'd be an answer. Yeah. Answer There's, for Mark. Mark, could you... Would, is it too early to ask that? Probably. Okay, that, that's fine. That's too early to ask that. Okay, I'll ask it. Well, we may have to have uh, smaller pieces of equipment in there, but uh, we will work within the confines of the parcel that we own. Um, and, and we're cognizant of what the what the other operator will have to do when they're clearing that portion of the lot. So you don't, we're not going to leave a, a windrow in the middle of an aisle or anything like that. We'll have to get that out of there over to the side. Or what we normally do is find an area that's uh, less utilized that in the parking lot and temporarily stockpile the snow in that area and then we'll come in and, and remove the snow with our other equipment shortly thereafter okay thank you you're welcome okay i know i was very adamant on this so greg i do want to thank you uh for asking the developers for assistance. I uh, appreciate that very much. And like I said, all they can do is say no, and which they said is say no. Um, so I thank you for that. Thank you. Alderman Zielinski. Thank you. Greg, now that we're talking about having a restaurant on that portion and having par city parking, how does this affect the neighborhood? Did that discussion come up at the Planning Commission? Because now we're gonna have cars there all day long if we get it and I hope it's a thriving business or they're gonna be pushed out into the street and now that affects the neighborhood because that's been brought up many a time with rezoning and stuff do you push the parking on into the streets then and then that starts to affect the neighborhoods um, well I mean if you look at how Germania was used in the past they would have meeting events that sort of thing during the day when the mm -hmm. whole lot was full and occasionally people would spill over into the shoot street lot um i think th what's i think what's being contemplated is a different men uh venue than a banquet hall it's being thought of more as you know something maybe like the lake house supper club or a, a restaurant of that nature and there is no there's nothing saying that it won't be that's correct but if I mean if you're planning an event and you need you know 200 parking stalls you're gonna you know kind of make a decision about that before you rent the facility yeah um, well I hate to have this I know you can't make this decision now what businesses would we say you can use that parking lot and what businesses would you say can't use the parking lot do we do we I ever mean make our, that you mean the yeah what, the, the city parking it city would be lots. operated just as any other city lot okay but now now there might there could be parking there 24 7 possibly mm -hmm. if you get the right business in there no because we don't we don't allow overnight parking in any of our parking lots well, it'd be except majority for the of it until what permit. time do they have to get 2, at 2 a.m 2 a.m. so it'd be from 5 mm -hmm. o'clock in the morning until 2 a.m. which is most of the day and if we don't have enough parking stalls in there and if you had to bring that up to a certain standard which I can't believe that if I was buying that lot that you would say Dan leave it a parking lot and don't put their screenings in I really have a hard time with that one because but it's not changing I know but we're splitting it off from another piece of property and I know if some certain people were doing it, you'd say, hey, where's the screenings mm, now? Put them in. I don't think so. No. You don't think so? No. Oh, I, I, in fact, I'm pretty confident I wouldn't be doing that. Okay. Well, it might happen again somewhere down the mm. line. And yeah. See, at that time. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if that ever happened in the city before, that we divided some properties and we just let them sit as they were until such maintenance came due. 
Um, I don't recall any. Okay. I just don't hope it becomes a, a, an effect on the neighborhood. The neighborhood's transitional now, and there's some very, there's some good neighbors there now that were concerned about parking when we were rezoning a church into a tavern. They were worried about where's, where's going to be, where's the parking going to be? Because they could be having the same event the same time Germania was, and there's nothing saying that that couldn't become a tavern yet. Mm -hmm. That's and correct. then what do we do? Or you want that in your neighborhood? It's a, it's a tough decision if this stuff starts to spread out and spill out into the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And that was a tough decision about the tavern at that point. But even if we weren't purchasing the, the parking area, it could become a tavern. And, you know, yes, but they were going to share parking at that point. They were going to work out an agreement with the neighbor about using their parking lot because the tavern basically didn't have any parking, mm -hmm. very little. Well, they had parking across the street, yes. on Shoot Street. Alderman Taylor. <coughs> How much uh, more <coughs> when we give up, when we uh, present them with 39 stalls in the Shoot Street parking lot, Greg, uh, what is the capacity of that lot at this time? Do you remember? Is it 96 or something? So if we have to store snow in the 71 stall parking lot, uh, we'll have ample room for a spillover into the Shoot Street lot for the McClone people. Is that how we're gonna approach that? Uh, and actually the 39 is incorrect. It should be uh, 49 to get up to 120. 120, 49 stalls. And so is that what we would do at that point? If we're well, I mean, we operate our lot somewhat differently. Like when the Shoot Street lot was just essentially City Hall and then a few folks from the Senior Center, well, we would allow quite a lot of that snow just to be stored there until such time as it was uh, convenient for our public works crew to clean that out. But now if we have the majority of that space being fully occupied, that uh, removal will have to be addressed on a different schedule. What I'm trying to look at here is the big picture for the city. <clears throat> are, are we going to need more parking uh, in the near future? Uh, I don't have our facility study in front of me, and if we're looking at a, a facility study, uh, are we, do we have enough uh, uh, growth for our departments? And uh, I'm just trying to get a handle on this uh, parking situation here. And uh, like I said, I wish. Uh, uh, we would have been up to date on our facility study. Uh, I don't care for the amount of rent that we're paying at a uh, couple places here. Uh, and I don't want to talk about future expansion uh, publicly. Uh, so I'll hold my comments to that at this time. Thanks. The item on the table then at this point is the proposed certified survey map for 320 Shoot Street. So this would only be recorded if we did purchase the property. If the purchase wouldn't happen, then we would just not record this CSM. So this doesn't commit you to voting for the parking lot acquisition if you vote for this at this time. So do we have a motion for the approval of the CSM? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll move that we approve the CSM map for 320 Shoe Street. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion carried on roll call 6 1. Item I is action items. The first item is the accounts payable and payroll for September 10th through September 17th. Is there a motion? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll move to approve the accounts payable and payroll for the term of 9-10-15 to 9-17-15 in the amount of $739,982.21. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on this item? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? 
Motion carried on roll call 7-0. Item two is the beverage operator's license applications for 2015 through 17. Do we have a motion for those recommended for approval at this time? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll move to approve the beverage operator's license applications for the 2015 through 2017 licensing period as listed under approved on the police department's memo dated September 17th, 2015. Second. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion carried on roll call 7-0. Do we have a motion at this time for the beverage operator's license is recommended for denial? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll move for the denial of beverage operator's license for Maria Guadalupe Alvarado. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion carried on roll call 7-0. Item three is the first revision to the state municipal agreement for the state Leda local bridge project, Third Street Bridge. Is there a motion? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll move to approve the first revision to the state municipal agreement for a state let local bridge project, the Third Street Bridge. Second. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, could we have a oh, Dan? I'm sorry. Mark, could you explain this to the I always wait until I'm just about ready to say take a vote. <laughs> okay, we were recently notice, notified by DOT that they wanted to open up our agreement and uh, uh, well, revise, amend the agreement due to uh, price increases for the project. Um, and those price increases are a result of the structural masonry cost going up dramatically. They, they've noticed on some of their other recent bridge projects. Uh, the bridge ended up being a little bit wider than what was initially anticipated because of the uh, requirement for sidewalk provisions uh, on both sides of the bridge. Um, we also ran into some DNR stipulations for fish spawning and now more recently a northern long-eared bat population that they are concerned about and that's going to add some cost to the project. But we have no choice. That's uh, part of the when you have federal dollars, and uh, those are, these are some of the things that you have to overcome. Um, so this actually is we, we're looking at it as as a good thing because they are throwing two hundred thirty thousand dollars more federal funds into the project. The one caveat is that we now have that project capped at that amount at four hundred twenty-eight thousand for the construction portion of the project, um, but. Our comfort level is fairly high with that because we did contact the consultant who's doing the work on it, the bridge design, and the state utilized their numbers in coming up with this cap. And their numbers, they're telling us, are fairly conservative. They've thrown in extra money for a staged construction because we're going to do the bridge half at a time so that no temporary bridge is going to have to be um, constructed to maintain access and they threw in some money for late season construction, additional construction costs. So on, on those grounds, uh, we're, we're <coughs> comfortable with the cap and we certainly welcome the additional federal funds. Uh, there does remain the possibility that the city may have to make up some funds if the construction costs exceed this capped amount. Although the, even at that point, the, we could still uh, request additional federal funds if there are any available at that time. And hopefully that isn't um, something that we would have to do with it. There is enough uh, fund funding in the program, hopefully for the bridge now. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion carried on roll call 7-0. <clears throat> Item four is the flexible spending agreement vendor assignment. Director Sino, did you want to comment on this? 
Um, this is a pretty straightforward transfer. Um, BMO Benefit Services, which is providing our flex spending plan, has been bought out by um, TASC, and they are asking us to do an assignment. Um, I think it's okay for the city to do the assignment, but as part of this assignment, per my memo, what we're going to do is we're going to give them a precautionary termination letter for December 31st so that we do have the right to select a different uh, flex spending provider if we so desire um, over the next couple months. Do we have a motion at this time? Alderman Nichols? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll move to, app to approve the assignment of the current health care FSA and dependent care FSA from BMO, BMO Benefit Services to Total Administrative Services Corporation. There's a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Well, she carried on roll call 7-0. Item 5 is a collateral assignment of rights to performance incentive payments by Menasha Downtown Development, LLC. Uh, Director Kyle, would you like to comment on this? So what was included in your packet was a, the uh, collateral assignment document that was uh, drafted by the lender using a template that the city of Menasha had created for, I believe it was the ponds of Menasha. Um, and subsequent to that, there was some back and forth Forth between the city attorney and uh, the uh, lender and uh, what's being distributed now is uh, some modifications that were proposed by the city attorney and uh, accepted and then there were some additional language that was added by the lender to um, relative to notice for changes um, and that type of thing. So the the changes that are distributed are more or less legal technicalities and I would ask that you uh, approve the agreement sub subject to approval uh, by the city attorney of the language in the collateral assignment. Um, and I want to just step back for a second. So normally there would be a mortgage on a property but since this is a ground lease the bank is looking for some security uh, for the funds it's lending and so what this document does is essentially pledge the TIF increment that is owed as a developer incentive to the lender versus that money going to the, the developer so uh, we've done this um, with the Ponds of Menasha, we've done this uh, with the PJC group on the Gilbert site, we've done this with Randy Statmiller on the Regional Planning Commission's building. So it's a, a requirement uh, that's being imposed by the lender on the developer to help secure the, uh, their loan. Do you have questions, Alderman Taylor? This is a time sensitive. Uh the, document. the lender is trying to get their financing package finalized, and I believe this is part of that effort. When did, when did we, you know, you, you throw a four-page document on our desk and trying to listen to, when did we get this document? Uh, this, we've got this document today, the revised document. Mm -hmm. And how does it vary to the, the four-page document we have here? Is this just amendments to this? So if, if you'll look on section 45, there it talks about um, giving notice to the lender about modifications to the development agreement. And then on the next page, uh, section eight, the notices, uh, the the form in which notices are actually delivered to either the borrower or the lender or the city. So again, I, I don't think these are material. The, the main thing is is pledging, you know, our development incentive uh, 
to the lender versus the developer. I think. Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Director Kyle, um, you mentioned that the, I just want to make sure I heard you correctly, the attorney did review the original document, our city attorney, Correct. and sent her requests to them. Mm -hmm. And then those requests are in here along with a few requests from the lender. Right, that's correct. Um, and then the city attorney <coughs> will be able to review this when she is available again. Assuming you make that as part of a motion to approve, yes. Okay. I'm going to move that we approve the collateral assignment of rights to performance incentive payments by Menasha Downtown Development LLC in favor of First National Bank Fox Valley contingent upon the review and acceptance by the city attorney. There's a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Thank you. More discussion? Oh, I have one more Go question. For it. And just to be clear, we have done things like this have happened before with other developers. This isn't um, specific to this yes. situation. These these things are very common with like developer finance tips, where the lender is wanting to have that surety of that money coming to them, so it doesn't get tangled up in the on the developer's side, and then they are not getting their loan payments. So it, it is quite common. Thank you. Alderman Zielinski. Why wouldn't we want it the other way, looking at it as for the taxpayer? What if something would happen that this building wasn't full? Would, does that change anything on our obligation? If the building wasn't full. Well, there, the tax increment has to be generated before it can be pledged. So if, if if the building isn't uh, generating the $12 million that we we're expecting it, the developer is still obliged to make its payments to the lender. Um, it would have less TIF increment to make available to pay that off, so they'd be digging in their pockets to make that difference. And I asked this question a long time ago. What if this development was sold in the next five years? Are we on the hook then? There's, well, this goes back to the development agreement, and there's um, assignment clauses in there and so forth. And I, uh, I think I asked Pam that question. There are no guarantees that this developer will be involved in this building That's forever, right. mm -hmm. even for 25 years, even for five years. Mm -hmm. They said they would be for 25 years or 24, but there's no guarantees, she told me. And does this assignment of whatever we're doing here tie us deeper to it well okay what what may happen is um, we we have a, a development agreement hopefully we'll have a ground lease and now we have this collateral assignment so if if the building is sold the bank would need to be made whole prior to transfer of that property to another entity or the whole thing would get assigned through some sort of agreement. But I mean, who would, who would be making them whole? We would, wouldn't we? No. The only thing we're obliged to make is the um, incentive payment from the TIF that's generated by the increment. Yes. And that was not a previous question. If this thing was sold and it didn't sell for the same amount of money as we anticipated, we're on the hook. We're, we're on the hook once to the pledge developer, the amount of money that the TIF is yeah, generating. Yeah, once the developer, dis if the developer would disappear or move on to a different project or whatever, I don't know. I'm just looking in the long range if we would be we'd still be obligated to pay that loan, wouldn't we? If, if I may, I think, if, I, if I'm understanding this correctly, this is basically changing the person to whom we send the check to. It's not in any way changing the amount of money that we would. No legal obligations are changing on 
this because if you'd like to comment in a more technical term but <laughs> no you said exactly what I was going to say this doesn't obligate us to anything other than the what's in the regular developers agreement just instead of writing out the incentive payment whichever is whatever amount is earned to the developer we're going to do it to the bank that's it there's okay. no additional obligation to the city okay thank you is there any further discussion seeing none could we have a roll call vote please Motion carried on roll call seven zero. Item six is the offer to purchase of 320 Shoot Street. The first motion would be to remove from the table, and then we could discuss the offer if the council so desires to remove it from the table. Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that we remove from the table the offer to purchase for 320 Shoot Street, Menasha. Is there a second? So at this point, we'll be taking a vote to remove this to the table and bring it back for discussion. Could we have a roll call, please? Motion carried on roll call 7-0. Okay, so the motion is on, the um, item is on the floor at this point and we would need a motion to accept the offer to purchase or another motion so the if so the council desires alderman nichols thank you mr mayor i move that we approve the offer to purchase 320 shoot street menasha in the amount of two hundred ninety thousand dollars is there a second there's a motion a second discussion alderman taylor made the second mayor alderman can you, can you state that because i can never hear when from down there who makes a second. Thanks, appreciate that. <coughs> uh, Director Kyle, uh, as businesses do get sold, and I'm not worried about the first sale here, but down the road, uh, we have everything in place that uh, this building couldn't turn into because of our, I think within churches and schools or any type of adult entertainment or anything. We have that in, in place. Yeah, it's 500 feet. Mm -hmm. Thank you. How far is that? 500. Okay. And uh, I'm going to come back to this, but I, oh, I know. Uh, Director Sino, uh, this was our, our TIF was not able to support this this 290,000 or is that what the number is? Uh, how are we going to? What is the mechanism here to to borrow this money and what type of percent? And where are we on that? The discussion we've had is that it would be included in the 2016. Um, CIP as a project approved by the council but not funded in 2015. We would then fund it in 2016 with a state trust fund loan borrowing as part of the CIP borrowing. Um, likely a 10 year obligation at 3.25% as the interest rates stand right now. And how does that, uh, we keep driving our, our um, our overall uh, credit rating down, does that push us back up? Uh? Um, as far as um, using our capacity, it would obviously use about 290000 worth of our capacity. Um, we're getting our bond, um, our status with our current bonds and how much we have outstanding, I think, in check a lot. We were up to about 85% of our capacity used. We are now um, right around 70% in the next couple of years. We think we'll be in the neighborhood of about 65%. So 300,000, it's a very lot of money, but it, it's not going to affect um, our borrowing capability um, to a large extent. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Alderman Langdon. Thank you, Mayor. Greg, are there parking lots that are appraised? I mean, do they appraise parking lots? Um, I would think there have been parking lot appraisals, but I'm not aware of any specific one. Not in Menasha or anywhere? Or not in Menasha, but uh, anywhere, I mean. Again, I'm not aware of them. Would the gentleman Line Decker know about that? If I could have unanimous consent to ask him that question? 
Thank you. I'm not aware of any parking lot preamble. So Anywhere? No. Okay. Um, boy, I just look at this 300,000. I know they said they compared it to Nina's. You know, Nina at this point is a lot stronger than we are. And I just think this price is a little bit too high. So, okay, thank you. Alderman Keehan. Thank you. Director Kyle, um, you mentioning the Nina parking, you mentioned that they used a comparable that was 5000 per stall. Where was, was that a, an existing parking lot? Um, that was a number that was given to me by uh, the owner. So where exactly that was in Nina, I'm not sure, but perhaps you could ask them. Can I ask yeah, something? Yep. <coughs> Can you tell us where? Actually, uh, Chris Hayes has given us uh, quotes of eight to ten thousand per stall. Okay, and that's downtown. Okay, thank you. Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Director Kyle, in what year was the McClone Agreement approved? Do you recall? Uh, I, I believe it was 98. Uh, it may have been 97, but I think the TIF plan started in 98. Okay, so I'll go with 1998. The city approved a a developers a development agreement we entered into an agreement that required us to provide 120 stalls for a very long time and those stalls have since been displaced because of another agreement that we have entered into and so this isn't in my mind I don't see this as something that has blindsided us it's crossing the I's and dotting the T's of the most recent development agreement and we're still obligated to provide those 120 stalls um, and I still believe that this is the best option at this time and the most affordable option and I think that we should take it before the price goes up thank you Alderman Zalewski I'm just glad we didn't go to New York and ask for their parking rates <laughs> That would have been um, per day, wouldn't it, <coughs> to 10,000 per day? Quite possibly. I don't know why we're comparing us to Nina. And Greg, is this setting a record for the purchase of a parking lot in the city of Menasha? Well, I mean, the only other parking lot I recall purchasing was uh, the one behind Knott's Landing. Uh, it was purchased from uh, an individual. Um, We've spent money on a number of loca uh, locations, the Shoot Street lots, those, those were not inexpensive acquisitions. Um, you know, this is a real estate transaction. We're, we're a buyer, they're a seller. We have to come to a price and, and move on. Mm -hmm. I think we're at a price that, you know, has been negotiated and I, I'm not sure what our options are uh, to go elsewhere, quite honestly. Did you think about getting an appraisal on it by a third party? We can appraise it all we want, but it's ultimately what it's, what it's worth is what we're willing to pay and what they're willing to sell it for. You know, what's the current assessed value? Well, the current assessed value is, um, it's five bucks a square foot. Um, I, I don't know, I'd have to look at how many square feet and so forth, but as I mentioned, the, that where I started was 192000 which was the cost for the land and then the cost for paving it. And I think the cost for paving it was about 70000 Mark, do you recall that? That one I don't recall. Yeah. Nobody on this council, other than maybe Marshall, should be surprised because this was brought up by Mr. Taylor that these parking spots were going to be coming a big part of this development. And lo and behold, it's here. Now we have to pay Piper because of, we didn't negotiate further ahead. And now you say that we couldn't, but now it's too late. It, that, I mean, that was 
part of the discussion of the development agreement, we are, we've adopted a development agreement and we've made obligations for parking yes. to McClone. So yes. what option do we have at this point? We had other options, but you didn't seek the other side of the street. You told us about this side of the street down here. You said this, you came up with a number that said it was too expensive to go. That was your opinion. There was no appraisals done on that. There were no appraisals done on this. So what, what do I? It was, I, it was uh, I evaluated what it would cost to acquire the properties. I assumed purchasing them at the assessed value, which is a wild underestimate of what we would end up buying for that. I looked at the cost of uh, raising the structures, uh, restoring the site. We need to put in stable fill. We need to pave it. We need to create interior landscape islands. We need to light it. We need to provide for stormwater. And I did those calculations on my best professional judgment, and that's what it came up okay. to for both that, that area on the north side of Broad Street and this area over here on Shoot Street. Shoot Street, okay. But then looking at the long range plans like Mr. Taylor brought up, the long range, I think it would have been a better development if we would have gone north. It, again, that is there area. Is disagreement with that? I have disagreement with that because not only are we paying for that property, we're also losing substantial tax base forever. But then again, we could be con increasing. I, that could be debated both ways. I hear that you got to, sometimes you got to take some down to increased values in other parts of the neighborhood. You just can't keep moving out. And I mean, we can look at yes. the crystal ball in many different ways. You could look at this development taking place and there are being people now who want to acquire those properties and rehabilitate them to live there. So there's... I don't know about looking at a parking ramp. <coughs> that was the discussion. What happens to these properties now that they're looking at a parking ramp? I, time will tell, and I don't think those are high, high tax dollar properties to begin with. Thank you. Alderman Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, from our first closed session up here, we talked about the elephant in the room, and that was these stalls. And no action. Kick the can down the road. This should all have been put together in the development agreement. You just can't ignore those things. Like I said, it was the elephant in the room, and it was ignored. And here we are at this point. Uh, and we hear that the development agreement doesn't uh, uh, allow us to leverage that or put that into this project. And uh, as it states in this letter from the developer that we asked for some help with this. Well, it's all part of the project. The Broad Street parking lot, the taxpayers have over a million dollars invested in that lot through property acquisition and uh, redeveloping that property. Taxpayers gave up a lot. We gave up a lot for that parking lot. And uh, it's a great project. None of us are, but we're kicking the can down the road and then we get to a point where, you know, instead of putting together this, this package. And t to me, anytime we do a TIF project of this, magnitude of this, you know, uh, uh, financial level, we should be taking care of our city a little bit better. We should be picking up the blighted properties or the distressed properties. And we should be looking at it as, as a comprehensive development and not just focusing on a couple things. Uh, I think our businesses are already starting to which is in my district, are starting to complain about parking <coughs> situations. And <clears throat> I'm sure if we put developers like this in a situation that hurt their businesses with parking, they would be bringing it to our attention too. So uh, I, I still think at this juncture, we're still short-sighted about looking comprehensively. We have distressed properties to the to the west of this development, to the north of this development, I think, which could uh, be identified. And um, 
there's a lot of for sale signs on Broad Street at this time. And the parking ramps out in the street, and you got to put a sidewalk in yet, and some landscaping. I don't know how we're going to line up the 400 block with the 300 block abroad, but uh, I can't see where there's any parking, so we've lost all that uh, street parking now. And what benefit is that to uh, uh, all the business people used to park their cars out that far because the customers don't want to park that car and far out, and now I think we're, we're losing that. So. We should have probably included some more parking in the ramp for uh, our business people. Uh, but we got pushed back in the 11th hour on this project. And, uh, and it was a two year, in two years being developed and we, we get pushed in the corner. And uh, certainly uh, for the benefit of the community, uh, I, I know we have to provide this parking, but also one of the developers in that development agreement uh, is the same person that uh, we're getting this parking for. So he's certainly aware of the, the development uh, agreement. Uh, the McClone Company was uh, the front person on this project when we purchased the hotel. So they knew early on that this could be a problem. And uh, I think the, our administration, I think we could have did a little better job getting out in front of this, and, and especially when we were in closed session up here talking about the whole TIF and the whole project. And uh, certainly I don't know if I recall that we were told that in that early hour that uh, the TIF wouldn't support uh, another 300000 We knew the TIF wouldn't support it if we didn't get the $500,000 uh, state grant, which I'm glad we did, and the developer developer at that point said they would help us if we did, or would write a check for that amount if we didn't get that. And I think uh, disappointed that the developer uh, at some point just you know didn't try to uh, respond to our situation here. Uh, because the development has caused this. If there wasn't a development, we'd still have a million dollar parking lot that we city bought and paid for uh, with this uh, agreement. Um, I, I hear that the, the dollar amount was um, that somewhere in Nina there was lots that were being sold for this. I don't know if that reflects as any real estate person would see, does that reflect what it would what it would sell for in the city of Menasha? I don't know that. I, I like all of uh, um idea to have a estimate done on it. And uh, again, I try to look at the bigger picture and uh, uh, for the comprehensive uh, property and buildings that we need for our community to operate. Uh, um, I think, uh, and we're going to fall short on the stalls here, 71 stalls we need, and we're going to lose 25 in 10 to 15 years. So there's another uh, issue there, and we're going to lose some stalls on the Shoot Street lot if we have to bring that up to the standard. So I still think we're, we're in a shortfall here. And we're not looking at uh, a big enough uh, acquisition here for, for the city. And also maybe picking up some blighted property. Uh, if we're going to spend this type of dollars, I'd like to see uh, us somehow uh, have the neighborhoods benefit from it and move the city forward in, in our development. So. There's a lot of questions here that I think are unanswered. And, uh, I don't know how far we can push this down the, kick this can down the road yet if we need to make a decision tonight or uh, if we need to look at more of a big picture. Because apparently this doesn't, this will meet our short term needs, but uh, not our long term needs with the amount of stalls here so and the other 
38 stalls plus the building. I don't know what that would come to as a, as a price or if there are developers even interested in selling it if we had to expand in the future when we lose these 25 stalls uh, do we want to expand on the same property or move to the west and, uh, I know the property to the east uh, the former church is uh, nearing completion and Alderman Zelinsky mentioned about the parking stalls that, that uh, when that project first came up that they'll be using the shoot street lot for overflow and I guess there was some sort of agreement with the uh, property to the west of them that they would have some sort of uh, agreement there, but certainly that agreement will be uh, probably not acceptable. But uh, Greg, can anybody park in this parking lot? I mean, if it's a city lot, or can we designate this these stalls exactly for between seven and five for the McClone people? I guess what I'm looking at, let's say this church develops into apartments and uh, 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 let's say a bar and you have people that are parking there all day long. The bar hours are 6 to 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. Uh, can those people just park in that lot, take up these? No, cell? no. They, the park would be the lot would be for exclusive use by McClone during normal business hours and then it would be available as any other city lot other than those times other than at those times and we can do that by ordinance um, we will um, have to I assume do something to designate that as a as a city parking lot yes okay. and you think we have legal ground to stand on with that. I know the attorney's not here, but uh, I have a public dollars. Yeah, I, I don't see why not. I mean, we've done that elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Seeing no other discussion, we have a motion on the table. Could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion carried on roll call 4 3. Item J is held. That's uh, needs a two-thirds vote because it's not uh, it wasn't budgeted. I believe no. Yes, I believe no because it's going to be placed in next year's budget. Correct. It would be placed in the funding for 2016. So we wouldn't be able to expend the funds until the 2016 budget would be approved. So I think at this time that motion would fail until the budget is uh, approved. We're not voting on a 2016 budget up here. We'll have to check with the attorney at, when she returns regarding that. I won't take action until I get direction from the attorney. Thank you. I, item J is the ground lease agreement for the Broad Street parking lot. Do we have a motion? everyone at once these this I believe has the amendments that were requested at the last meeting Alderman Nichols thank you mr. mayor I'll move to approve the ground lease agreement for the Broad Street parking lot is there a second there's a motion and a second do we have discussion Alderman Nichols thank you mr. mayor director Kyle does this um, revised agreement include all of the changes that were discussed at our last meeting 
Yes, there were uh, a number of things that the uh, city attorney reviewed at the last meeting, and then there was one additional item concerning uh, use of the ground floor uh, during holidays, and that was added as well. Thank you. I would just add, like to add that um, this ground lease agreement is another item that simply needs to be wrapped up because of the developer's agreement that we entered into. Um, and so the changes that we requested are in here and I would encourage us to go ahead and approve that this evening. Thank you. Alderman Taylor. I would uh, ask that we not approve of it this evening. Uh, Alderman Zelensky asked a great question at the last meeting. Uh, uh, that we, you know we're allowed to use this first floor in non uh, business hours but he had a great question is how many of these stalls on the first floor are handicapped and he could have two-thirds of the first floor handicapped so that certainly puts the community in a, a tough position that uh, we don't have enough parking for the purposes that we had uh, asked for so I think we need to know how many parking stalls are on that first floor that are with the handicap and uh, maybe we need to expand this agreement to the second floor for non-business hours or for festival times in the community. So uh, I, I'll be voting against this until I know that number of the, of the first floor uh, parking situation. So, Director Kyle. Um, ADA requirements for uh, up to 300 stalls. The requirement for handicapped parking is seven. Any further discussion? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Well, she carried a roll call 6 1. Item K is ordinances and resolutions. The first item is 01715, an ordinance amending Title 13, Chapter 1 of the Code of Ordinances in the zoning section. And this is the ordinance that we spoke about during the public hearing at the beginning of the meeting. So we could take action on that tonight if council so desires. Is there a motion? Did the council want to leave this on the agenda for a second reading at the next meeting? Would that be your desire at this point? Taking that no one's jumping forward, I'm going to assume that's what they're looking for. Item N is public comments on any matter listed on this agenda. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to comment at this time? We've lost most of them. Item O is recess. Do we have a motion to recess at this time? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll move to recess to Administration Committee and Board of Public Works. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? We are at recess. Thank you.